They just do what they always do. Why is he yeah, putting Leo Konarov on the first line? Like, welcome to the rock. So today I'm going to be talking about, and I kind of touched on it really early on, um, what a New York Islanders victory tonight would mean to Islander fans, um, and specifically Islander fans who I would say are around my age, maybe from you know anywhere from 40 and and younger. Um, you know, I grew up as a diehard Islanders fan. Um, I remember my dad bringing me to my game, to bring me to games uh, when I was about my daughter's age, so like four years old. Um, there was a there was a picture he has of me uh, on the ice with uh, with Adam Adam Creighton at one point. Um, I don't know how he got down there, made a one something, but uh, I went there my whole life, and you know, I remember watching games with him on the couch growing up. Uh, every time they scored, you know, giving each other a high five, you know, him picking me up. Um, and, you know, so for people my age, we haven't really had that much joy. You know, we missed out on all the cup years. Um, and for someone like me, like as I really got older and, and started to understand hockey, by the time that came around, you know, the dark ages started. Yeah, you know, in 93, that year, the run they had against Montreal, um, you know, I was eight years old. So while I remember it, I don't, I didn't really feel it emotionally as I would now. And then, as you guys know, the dark ages started after the, the sweep in 94. Um, since then, since that point, we endured so much hardships and just mockery with, with bad ownership. Um, you know, John Spano, the gang of three, uh, changing our, you know, our cherished Islander logo to a fisherman and and getting mocked by everybody. We want fish sticks. Um, you know, trading our star player, Ziggy Palfi, uh, because ownership didn't want to pay him and they were cheap, uh, which made me cry. I remember coming home from school, my brother and my dad telling me about it. And, you know, I cried like a like a baby. He was, he was my favorite player. Um, you know, any Islander fan testified to watching him. You know, he was electric and he was the one good thing that we had in a time where, you know, we didn't have much. Um, and then, Came along the early 2000s again. You know, we 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 struggled, and Charles Wong was there to to save the team and, and bail us out and bring some you know ray of hope again. You know, he, he he brought some stable ownership back to the Islanders. Tried to get a building done. Um, Millbury. I'm not going to go into the moves he made, but you know they did get us back into the playoffs for the first time in seven or eight years. But long term future, it really hurt us. Um, so they were good for, they were decent for a little while there, you know, the early 2000s, uh, coupled with the lockout, 2007, they were a fringe playoff team, lost to Buffalo. And then once again, after that, uh, we had lean years again, where, you know, you have 6,000 people out of game. And I'm talking like pre Tavares, you know, 2008, um, 2009. And again, we, we were, we were a laughing stock, you know, the, the, the Neil Smith fiasco get fired, Gar well, like 2007, Garcinel took over. So what this means is, and, you know, I can get emotional talking about it, but it was nice to finally have John Ledecky and Scott Malkin come along and treat us like a professional organization again where we have respect and just be able to connect and be with my dad and be proud of a team that you could root for and finally doing the right thing and not feeling like we're a joke anymore. To get this far again for the second year in a row, I've never experienced this before and to have this happen it's it's you know when a season starts you always think to yourself in your head like when you're daydreaming oh like imagine if your team's the one that goes to the final or, or wins it all and then you kind of come back to reality and it's like oh well there's 31 teams in the league you know that's going to be hard to do the fact that it's it's this close away and we've been starved for it for so long it just it it's going to make that much sweeter if it does happen, but the heartbreak is going to be is going to be tremendous. So, what I'll end with is, you know, again, I'm not my dad's age. I didn't experience all those cup years, or you know, people who are even 50 years old. They they knew what it was like to have that ultimate, you know, euphoria, and to have this be this close, and you want it so bad and struggle for so long, it. Again, I could. I think I could speak for the whole Islander fan base when I say, if we win this game, no matter what happens in the finals, it's a team that we'll never remember, and it's a period in our lives that you'll never remember because you guys know 
You know, there are franchises across all sports where a fan can root for that team and never in their life to the day they die experience a championship. It's not guaranteed. And, you know, once in a lifetime scenario sometimes. And I'm not greedy. I just want one trip to the finals and, and possibly a cup. But it will mean the world to Islander fans everywhere if we can get the job done tonight. And sorry about, you know, getting a little choked up before. I think it just shows for my passion and just in general our or passion the fan base has, how much we want this tonight. Never apologize for that. Never, ever, ever apologize for that ever again. If I see you and I, if I see you and you're apologizing for that, I'm gonna smack you for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right now. That was inspirational. You know me. I ain't rooting for them, but that was inspirational. So um, it almost made me want to root for them, man. It almost <laughs> did. And then I'm sitting there going, don't, don't cry. Don't yes. cry because then I'm gonna have to root for them. Anthony's definitely tugging at the <laughs> there, you know. But he's right. <laughs> yeah, 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 Chris, definitely. But yeah, let it out. But you know what? Uh, and I think what you're also echoing is the way John and I felt in uh, either 2012 or even uh, 2014, <laughs> where it was, it was, um, we had, especially to 2014, where we knew that. Um, and actually, by the way, Sean liked that. Yeah. Um, it's Thank you. 2014 uh, where they finally get the chance to go, and then they went. And if you're me and John, not only were you happy to – uh, I was happy to watch the Rangers on my birthday, which is June 7th. The second time in my life I was able to do that. But the um, but then like it got taken away from us. Because that's the thing. I still feel like the ref screwed us in that series. Yeah. Um, in in 2015, it felt like they were going to do it. It was definitely going to happen. And now looking back at it, Matt Zuccarello's injury really meant a lot more than what I thought it did. So um, it's it, it's it's you need all the ducks in a row. This is where I say to some some uh, some fans of mine that are going, "Oh, you guys have won a championship in seven years." You know how difficult it is to win one. Yeah. One, you know how many championships are the teams I follow? I've, I've I've gotten in my lifetime. Two, I've watched them both. I'm happy to say that I was eight years old and sixteen. The New York Mets and the and the New York Ranger. So, and as I turned to a friend of mine last night, I went, you know what? I guess I should root for the Islanders a little bit because he's never seen a championship for any team that he's ever yeah. rooted for, except Thank for you. a <laughs> kid with a good Mets. It's just I would I would love to see it for you. Here's another thing to add to that. If you look at all these teams, teams like the the Blackhawks, Penguins, and the Kings, and they're they're winning like multiple. Like you don't realize like how spoiled you are to get two multiple cups in one decade. I, I mean, and that's why the Islanders were spoiled back then in the 80s when you know, yeah, they won four in a row. Like, you were just seeing something that was never going to happen again. And then the yeah. Oilers came along and Wayne Gretzky was just Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> Who was going to stop Wayne Gretzky except for Steve Smith? So... Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it just... You don't you don't realize it. Like, Pittsburgh won three in nine years. They won three... Actually, three in eight years. When you think about it, or nine seasons rather, you know, 2009, 16, and 17. And you, you win that many in that sort of a time. Oh, Chicago. Chicago won three in six seasons. You don't see that. And you know what? The Chicago might not see another one for a very long time. And, and Pitt- the Kings had four years in a row where they went to the conference finals. And 13. twice. Yeah, it was uh, 2012, 2013, 2014. No, sorry, uh, 2014, my mistake. 2015. Um, well, yeah, they did go in 2014. Who? <laughs> what an idiot. Go um, so in 2015. Anaheim uh, lost to Chicago. Ah, uh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. had years in a row where they went to the conference finals and won two Stanley Cups. Still three. Yeah, still three. It, it, it just, uh, it just that success. You know, you, and that's the thing with with, with the Islanders. This could be the last time they get this close for a bit, and I'm not saying like ever again or, or you know, but, you know they have a cap crunch coming. This is their shot, and, and you know what? It kind of reminds me of 
Anthony, remember what Joe Beninati told us when we had the show we had him on about how it was their last chance to do this with Trots? Yeah, what? Yeah. That? Maybe that's maybe that's the case here. Barry's got the experience there. Maybe he rallies the troops. Yeah. Well, yeah. And you know something? That's that's why Barry Trotz is here. That's why Barry Trotz is a legend. And, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of say is like, you mentioned 2014 and, and, you know, same thing. Like, I'm like, I'm not going to lie. Like, obviously, I, I didn't want to see the Rangers win the cup in 94. I was happy in LA won. But at the same time, I have a lot of friends, you know, obviously John included, that are range that are diehard Ranger fans. I'm not talking about just like a casual Ranger fan, diehard Ranger fans that, yeah, I didn't want them to win. But at the same time, I said to myself, you know what? It would be cool, and I would I would be happy for them because I know how much it would mean to them. So I get there's that, <laughs> yeah. that still, there's that definite line. Like I know you guys don't want the Islanders to win, but same thing. I'm sure if they did, you'd be happy for people like me who just dealt with so much shit throughout the years. So yeah, I I get that. I I, I get it. You, your brother, your father, Fiore, Chris, my uncle Rich. I, I mean, you know what? There are a lot of dumb fans that say a lot of dumb things me. <laughs> yeah. And those fans, I don't I I wouldn't I wouldn't be happy for them, but I'd be happy for the ones that I know that have stuck their career. Like Anthony's true. If you want a guy that literally sat there, I mean, I, I met you in what, 2005? Yeah. And yeah. at 2006 season, they missed the playoffs. You didn't know what the hell was happening and then Buffalo the next year. And we both wanted Gary Bettman's head for the calls that Buffalo was getting away with that postseason in both series. Is, but I, I was there with you at the draft party when they drafted Tavares in 2009. Yep. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's sports. It, it's sports. If the Islanders win, then you know what? Yeah, yeah, I'm not. I don't want it. But you know what? I'll be happy for my friends. They deserve it. Um. By the way, Chris, earlier, I was, I was saving this towards the end of the segment, which is uh, he asked if we gave our predictions just to remind you. Anthony's got the Islanders winning tonight. I have Tampa surviving, but I got a bad feeling the Islanders are going to win, and Phil has got Tampa winning. Um, the uh, honestly, die hard. They do. Yeah, they do. But you know what? The key thing is now the Rangers are building a good car. Now they don't have a drunk driver. So <laughs> it's it's just come on. Uh, when somebody was saying to me, they go, oh, the Rangers are, are that close. I go, no, they're not. They still have David Quinn. So, um, but uh, tons of Penguins fans, uh, Sean's saying this, uh, they're so, yeah, they were spoiled. They were spoiled by getting, they, were, they won the lottery literally almost twice. Once by tanking and once by actually just the NHL handing it over to them. And then... Uh, I still think that 2005 lottery was rigged. Yeah, well, I 100% think it, and it, it was rigged for the wrong team. It is it was, not- yeah. <laughs> but no, 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 it's just, it's just, he was, he just wasn't the right coach for this team. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Mm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.